A recent summary in NEJM Journal Watch General Medicine labeled a study about treating acute exacerbations of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, as practice changing. So it seems important to spread the news. To do that, we've got Dr. Daniel Dressler, the summarizer of the study, Dr. Selma Messus, the study's first author, and Dr. Samir Nuira, a senior author, uh, to discuss it with us. Dr. Dressler is a professor of medicine at Emory University in Atlanta. He is also deputy editor of NEJM Journal Watch General Medicine. Dr. Messus and Dr. Nuira are in the emergency department and the Department of Laboratory Research at Monastir University in Tunisia. Welcome to you both. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank well, thanks you so much, much, Joe. And welcome again to Dr. Masseus and Noira. Uh, I'll just jump in and go ahead and ask you if you would agree with sort of this thumbnail description of your work. You randomized approximately 300 patients with acute exacerbation of COPD to one of two antibiotic regimens, either a two-day course of levofloxacin or a seven-day course, which is the usual care. So I'll ask you if that's correct and if you can tell us briefly why you undertook this study and essentially what you found. Thank you, uh, Dan, for uh, your choice of our studies. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very proud uh, to be here and to be with you to explain uh, the background of our study and the results of our study. Our trial is probably the first uh, that uh, compare uh, a short course of antibiotic as short as two, uh, as two days uh, compared to uh, seven days, it's conventional duration. And we, we found that there are, there are similar results and uh, today is as effective as seven days. We know that actually the objective of the study is not to show or to demonstrate the similarity between short course and conventional course of antibiotics. This was clearly showed many years ago. Uh, I can say at least uh, since uh, 208, since the publication of the first meta-analysis about the efficacy and the comparison between the efficacy uh, uh, of the efficacy between short and conventional course. So many years ago, it, wa it was uh, uh, shown this evidence. This is, was not uh, our, uh, uh, our question. And uh, uh, as you can uh, uh, expect, uh, this is very important as a result, you know, it's very important, it's very relevant because this will lead to less consumption of antibiotics, uh, less antibac uh, antibacterial resistance, less adverse effects, and uh, perhaps more compliance. This, so uh, this was demonstrated uh, uh, many years ago. But the question of the present study is, is, this, is the following. What is the shortest course of antibiotics that we can accept for our patient, uh, super patient with exacerbation. And this is the main uh, question of the study. And you know that the, according to the recent recommendation of the goal, it, it is recommended that antibiotic therapy should not exceed five days. And some studies demonstrate that even with three days, we can have similar results as conventional duration. So for us, the, the, the question is, could we decrease the duration to less than three days? And that's why we performed this study. Because according to in vitro and animal studies, antibiotic efficacy, it, it has its maximum of effect during the first hours. So why not reduce antibiotic therapy to the least, uh, least duration? This, this is, was the background of our study. And fortunately, we demonstrate that we had similar clinical outcome 
with respect to clinical cure, to the need for additional antibiotic therapy, to the need to ICU admission, and to the, the duration of uh, exacerbation-free uh, interval. So uh, this is the background of our study, and this is the main finding of our study. I wanted to ask uh, you, Dr. Dressler, why you considered the, the research a practice changing, or potentially so. Is the five to seven day regimen baked into the current guidelines here? Sure, and, and thank you, uh, Dr. Moira, for, for that answer and response. And, and I appreciate also that there have been maybe some other studies that have suggested shortening the course for COPD uh, is probably appropriate. And yet, yeah, the, still, the, the gold guidelines or the international guidelines for uh, management of COPD and COPD exacerbations still is recommending even in 2022 they have this five to seven day course of antibiotics. And so uh, I applaud you for what you've done, which is uh, trying to see, well, can we get even shorter, shorter than the five days, even shorter than a three day course? And, and I think that you were able to, to demonstrate that in your patient population, that uh, equivalence in outcomes, uh, even with a two day course compared to a, a seven day course. And so I find that really valuable, really impressive. And as you say, it can also really help clinicians feel comfortable that that they can actually shorten the course, and, and maybe it will impact or influence guidelines uh, in the future to help maybe suggest a shorter course. And so I think that is why I consider it a value-added piece of medical literature and clinical literature and. Uh, something that we can practice on and maybe practice changing for many clinicians. You also noted in your in your comment, uh, Dr. Dressler, that uh, the findings need to be confirmed and more more work needs to be done in this area. But um, I, I can see the advantage of having a patient only taking two days and and not trying to not trying to to take a seven day course. Dr. Messus, your your design was was practical in nature, wasn't it? Uh, by that I mean some patients remained in the hospital even while on the two day course, uh, if it was considered clinically prudent uh, to do so. And of course, everyone received prednisone intravenously or by mouth if they were at home. Do you think you've got enough data to recommend two-day regimen as routine? And do your hospitals use the two-day regimen now? So it's a bit early to make such recommendations. Recommendations. Uh, we need we need larger studies. This may allow us to better target the recommendations concerning the duration of antibiotic therapy. For example, according to the age, the existence of comorbidity, biomarkers, uh, etc. Uh, so maybe uh, Professor Nuira can add a comment regarding this uh, question. Thank you, uh, Selma, for your answer. What I can add for this question, whether there is enough data to recommend two days regimen uh, as routine treatment, the answer, of course, is no because I think there's not enough data for that. With, with the available evidence, we can't recommend two days. But there is, a, uh, in my, in my uh, opinion, there is uh, two recommendations uh, and two directions for future uh, investigation. For uh, First, uh, we must have more investigation to uh, select patient who need antibiotic for COPD exacerbation. This is the first step, and it's a big challenge, you know. It's a, a very spread to g give antibiotics, and uh, unfortunately, until now, we don't know what is the best profile of patient who really need antibiotics. So this is the first step. The second step and the second direction, 
once the first step is clearly answered, uh, is to try to know what is the optimal duration of antibiotic course. I think it can be two, two days, it can be more, can be less. It probably depends, as said by uh, Selma, on the patients. Probably we will recommend uh, antibiotic duration according to the patient characteristics, demographic characteristics, or clinical characteristics, or others, some such as biomarkers, such as age, sex, or uh, something like that. So I think it's, it's really early to uh, answer to uh, or to recommend today uh, uh, antibiotic therapy for acute exacerbation of COPD. Well, and thank you for the, for those uh, answers uh, to Joe's questions, and and I I, I will say also that uh, in, I'm glad you brought up patient population, and you know we determining which patients need uh, antibiotics at all antibiotics for the COPD all. exacerbation, and I think you you all did a, a nice job in trying to identify those patients and not including patients uh, who did not meet the sort of anthonicin criteria for uh, requiring antibiotic therapy or potentially needing antibiotic therapy. So I appreciate that. And because we have other data that suggests that potentially patients with COPD exacerbation that are low risk, you know, whether or not they need antibiotics at all, uh, you may be getting to some of some of that. So I, I think your your study did a very nice job in you know, even with only about 300 patients, uh, it is still comparable to many studies in COPD uh, in terms of size. And so uh, I appreciate the work that you all have done. I'm, I'm wondering what is uh, what was been the reaction of your colleagues uh, related to this uh, research and these outcomes that you found? You know, uh, this is a very big challenge, you know, it's a very big challenge to translate scientific results into clinical practice. It's not easy at all, even in the developed countries and the examples are very numerous. You know, despite the evidence that short course of antibiotics is as effective as conventional course, I think more than the half of the physician continue to prescribe uh, antibiotic for at least seven days. And this is evident. So it's very big challenge. And for the Tunisian physician, it's, it's the same issue, of course. There is no reason to be different, you know. Perhaps we, we need to do more to make our results more visible. So uh, it's the future of our effort. We must not limit ourselves to a recommendation, but we must follow this recommendation, uh, try to tra uh, make the traduction of this recommendation in clinical practice. And this is our job. Greatly appreciate and, that as well. Uh, um, and, uh, and hopefully we're helping do something with you. I want to thank you, Dr. Mesu, Mesu uh, Dr. Noira, and uh, Dr. Dressler, uh, for this for this chat today. Thank you, Joe. Thank you thank very, you very much. much, Dan. We will call that the 298th edition of Clinical Conversations, all of which are available free at podcasts.njwatch.org. We come to you from the writers and editors of the NEJM Group. Our executive producer is Kristen Kelly, and I'm Joe Elia. Thanks for listening.